Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called A Note for Murder. A Note for Murder is for two to four players, takes about 15 to 20 minutes to play, and is for ages 13 and up. In the game A Note for Murder, you're going to be basically a detective, and you're going to be working with Detective Lestrade to try and figure out a whodunit case. The game is going to be composed of five cards in your hand, along with a, a, a secondary type of a card, which is going to be your murderer card, right? And you're basically going to be playing cards from your hand, trying to get matches. So I'll play a card and say, oh, does this match any of my types? And then you'll say, yes or no, and if it does match, you'll put it in one pile, if it doesn't, you'll put it in another pile. You'll draw a card and you'll continue going back and forth playing with up to four players, always playing with the player on your left, until you're able to deduce your weapon, your location, and your suspect, and if you can do that on your turn before anybody else, you're going to win the game. Let me go ahead and show you down below the full deck and everything that comes included in the game, a note for murder. So here is the complete setup for a note for murder. As you can see, you can play up to four players, and each player is going to get a set of five cards to start with. You're going to have this deck of cards, which you're going to shuffle and then deal everybody five cards. And then additionally, a separate card. This card here is one that they specifically cannot look at because this is what they're trying to solve for. So for instance, this player over here, it's got a... Uh, a uh, man, it's got a harpoon, and then it's got the Langdon Hotel. This is what he's trying to figure out or to solve, and if he can do that before anybody else can solve theirs, they win. Everybody's gonna have their five cards, their one separate, their deck of cards, and then there's gonna be most likely a set of these for every player, but these are little player reference cards that have the characters, the locations, and the weapons. Everybody's gonna take their cards in their hand like this, and then take the one that they're not allowed to look at and place it like this, kind of like blind man's bluff, so that everybody else can see what card is uh, uh, facing them. So everybody's gonna be able to see everybody else's, just not their own card, and then they're gonna have their own hand of cards here in which they can go ahead and utilize for the game. That's basically the setup for the game, no matter the number of players, as well as, basically Basically what you're going to get in the game a note for murder okay we'll come down now and I will show you how to play a round or so and then we'll give you my review so here we have a note for murder set up for two players and the reason why we did that is because you could play the same game with three or four players it's easier to explain with two players here everybody's got their five cards as well as their hidden card now for instance we would be playing as this player here and we would have our opponent we would know uh, what card he is basically trying to look for but we wouldn't know what is in his hand the beginning of the game starts off interesting because you're going to be selecting a card from your hand to give to your opponent face up to let them know uh, that one of these symbols, either the location, the, the character, or the uh, weapon, is part of the card that is hidden here. And both players will do that. So in this, this case, we know it's the result, revolver, this looking guy, and the Waterloo Station. If, for some reason, you don't have a card in your hand that matches one of those symbols, you can give him a card and say none of them match. But in this case, we do, so we'll go ahead and give this guy uh, the abandoned house, and of course the revolver is what matches. Then after you do that, every player is going to draw a card into their hands. Now that is done, that's the beginning of the game. You're going to have this, the, the of course, hidden card that's going to be in your hand. So when you're looking, it'll be kind of like this in which case you're not going to know what's behind there. Uh, and the same goes for this player here. Uh, you're going to get to see what card they have. To begin the game, uh, the first player will simply select a card in their hand and say, okay, does this card match... Uh, match the card that is what I'm trying to look for. And you would go, okay, no, it doesn't. And so he's gonna put it in the no pile. This would be the yes, this is the no. And after that, they're going to draw a card. And then you, will, as a player, will, will go ahead and do the same thing. You'll say, okay, uh, does this card here uh, match what my card is? And they'll go ahead and look at it and be like, oh, uh, no, it doesn't. So you put it in the no pile. And you keep going back and forth. And this pi these piles are going to stack up and stack up to which a point of you're going to be able to try and figure out or deduce what is your card. And if you can say, okay, I think it is uh, this character here with the revolver at the pool, uh, then you're going to flip it over. And if you are right, you win. If you are wrong, you are out. And you're going to play like that just until somebody is finally going to be able to guess what card your secret card is in the game. A note for murder, hopefully solving the case for Detective Lestrade. At its core, A Note for Murder is basically a deduction style game, similar to games like Telepathy and Battleship, in which you're going to be trying to play cards to finally match the ones on your card, or if you can also get it to where you're trying to not match completely, that'll give you a completely uh, all three different categories, which it is not. And you 
just trying to find the three categories which are. If you can do that before anybody else, you're going to win. It's a fairly simple style game, really easy to teach, really easy to learn, really easy to play and get into. Uh, this game is a Scotland Yard or like murder mystery type of a feel. It feels like Sherlock Holmes and that kind of thing in which you're just trying to place cards and, and gathering as much in information as you possibly can. Some of it comes down to luck as to what cards you're going to have in your hand and what cards you're going to be able to play. And if you have a lot of cards that match or simply a card that doesn't have a character on it that you've been looking for, that might throw you for a loop, and that happens with most deduction-based games. Uh, and this one here has a nice theme, and you do feel like you're searching for something, so in which case you'd be feel like you're searching for the murderer, you're searching for the card that you need to know. It has that blind man's bluff aspect to it because you can only see the cards in your hand that you need to use as clues, and the card you're looking for is right in front of you, but you're just not able to actually see it. You have to utilize every other detective's detective-solving abilities to try and solve your case before they do because it's all about speed and precision. This game has one of those things where it's like mind bendy. So if you're a person who's like not very good at deducing certain things and removing certain things from equations without having to look it on a board like telepathy is a game where you're just going to mark things off on the board to the point where you say okay now I know what it is and I can go ahead and win here because it's very very obvious. In this one here it is very similar in that notion, but it's also different because you have to go, okay, this one, this one, this one, oh, this one's in the yes, this is in the no, so if I swap these around, that would say that it has to be this guy here, and you have to kind of use that mind-melty aspect of the game, which is a lot of fun for those of you who like that style of gameplay. For me, it's a solid little game. It reminds me of other games similar in the style, but with a unique little theme and an added blind man's bluffing aspect to the game. It's cute, it's fun, it's quick, it's easy. It's one of those games where you're definitely going to know if you're going to be interested in picking up the game. Oops. <laughs> And you'll be, you can go ahead and check it out down below uh, in the description if you're interested in picking up the game A Note for Murder currently down on the floor. Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game card game review. If you're interested, take a look at the rest of our videos. One second. Boosh! Beautiful. Okay, check out the rest of our stuff on uh, YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it. As well as taking a look at unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We get you all covered there. And there's a ton of giveaways going on right now. A ton of great ones. And if you're interested, take a look at A Note for Murder, a game that's currently available down below in the description. If you seem seems like something that's interesting to you, if you like little deduction games, simple, basic style games that have um, a good amount of problem solving and up to four players. As well as taking a look at my friend everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek two great sites as well as my friend Ferdinand the cardboard stack for another great 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 reviewer all right guys that's all I got for you this time and as always I look forward to solving the murder mystery with you next time doodle 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 doodle